Tying a metal thimble onto a rope. Hello everybody, welcome back. And in today's little exercise, what I'm gonna do is show you a nice little knot to use to actually tie a thimble onto a rope. Now I was actually contacted a little while ago by somebody who does magnet fishing and he said one of the issues he had was, yes, tying the rope to his actual magnet was fine, but after a time of using it, his rope would start to fray. And so he just asked what I would recommend as a setup for actually attaching a rope to a fishing magnet. And so I did a little bit of research and I came up with this nice nifty little knot here. It is actually the um, poacher's noose or the scaffold knot. It's a scaffold knot really because it's gone round three times. Poacher's noose goes round twice. But actually it's a really nice little way of tying a loop, a slip knot into the end of a rope so that you can actually insert a metal eye or metal thimble, sorry, not metal eye, metal thimble into the actual end of the rope. And it also prevents it from fraying. And if you watch the video to the end, you'll see how I set up um, different attachments to that to make it actually work a little bit better and more functional. Okay, so anyway, without further ado, stop cackling, John, and let's get on and let's get knotting. See you on the other side. Right, so I have the two pieces of kit that I need to make up my um, eye is I've got one in number stainless steel eye. This one is, it says in size, inside number eight, and I've got myself some float rope here. Um, I don't know if you are a magnet fisherman, would you use float rope? Maybe the advantage is that the rope does float, but if you are in stealth mode, you maybe don't want such a bright color. Anyway, the first thing that we do is we get a, put a bite in our rope like so. So what I've basically done, I've taken a fair bit of rope, there's my working end there, so I've got a fair bit of rope here because we can adjust on this later on. And the next thing that I want to do is I want to tie myself the poacher's noose. Now poacher's noose or the scaffold knot are basically the same knot except it's the number of turns that you use. So the poacher's noose is two turns round and the scaffold knot I believe is three turns round. So anyway, the first thing I do is, that is my standing end, let's see, that's my standing end at the top there, and that's my working end here. So that I've formed a bite at this end, and the next thing I want to do is I want to pass my working end over the standing end like so, bring it round underneath, and I've brought it round once, go round again, so we're working in that direction twice, and then finally bring it round for a third time. And so you can see here now, I've worked that way and I've now ended up, and if I pass my marlin spike through there, I've ended up with three loops and my working end is on the left hand side. The next thing I do is I pass my working end underneath all three loops like so, simple enough to do, and then just gently pull up on it tight. Now don't pull up on it too tight to start with, just make it nice and neat and shapely. And you can see here, we've got a rather nice, to be honest, I like this knot. It's rather nice and symmetrical. And the next thing I do is I get my metal eye here and I place it in the eye or the loop of my rope that I've created here. And the next thing I do is just gently pull up on my standing end like so then gently tighten up the knot, tease it up in all directions, and you can see here now, we've got a bit of a gap there appearing, just pull it up here, on there like so, and eventually that knot will pull up nice and snug against our metal eye here. And what you want to then do is to re really make it snug, go and hang on something outside, and pull it up so it's really, really tight, and there's no chance of it coming undone. Um, and also, you know, on a visual basis, you know if it's coming undone because you've got three loops here. If suddenly your loops and your actual working end start disappearing, you know it's coming loose. But you could, if you wanted to, actually put some seizing on here just to hold it together at that point to make it more secure. So anyway, that is tying the actual knot into the 
eye itself. Uh, but if, say, if we are going, for example, magnet fishing, the next thing I would suggest is po probably get hold of your, get hold of a nice shackle like so, and then you can put the shackle through there, and then screw that up and attach that to your actual fishing magnet itself. And if I could actually do it up, a bit difficult there, screwing threads in, and there we go, we have ourselves a nice secure connection there for, say for example, a fishing magnet. This could be used for anything, anything you want, where you want a metal eye in your rope at the end there, this knot is absolutely fantastic for that. And the other thing that you could do as well, if you wanted a quicker connection, you could get yourself a carabiner and pass your carabiner through there. But one thing I would recommend is that if you are fishing magnet or some using a fishing magnet, I would suggest you get one of those carabiners that's got the actual screw lock on it. Because the last thing you want to do is that catching and come undone. So therefore, a good size shackle is probably better than anything. So anyway, quick little less, quick little exercise there. Tying a knot onto a metal eye rather than splicing it. And we've used, in this particular case, the poacher's noose or the scaffold knot. And so anyway, once again, thanks very much for watching. If you liked it, if you hated it, but please drop me a line down below, especially if you do go magnet fishing, please drop me a line and tell me all about your magnet fishing experiences. Okay, once again, thanks for watching and see you again shortly. Bye-bye.